Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video with the E82 1 series. Uh, in this video, as the title obviously suggests, we are going to be replacing the alternator on this car. Uh, and that is because it's old and it's making some pretty frankly nasty noises now. Um, mainly uh, the bearings are worn in the in the alternator and as a consequence of that it's making some pretty horrific chirping noises which is not uncommon on these cars uh, particularly at startup during operation when the revs are a little bit higher there tends to be a little bit of a bit of a chirp And occasionally, uh, as you shut the engine down, it will also do the same thing, but not as much. Um, and it probably tends to be four or five times out of 10 um, that it does it. Now, what I will point out is that the alternator is operating and carrying out its charging functions and um, supplying current to all the electrical systems on the car perfectly adequately. Uh, as you can see here, um, it, is, it is charging as it should. The, uh, the, the output voltage from the alternator is, is absolutely perfect and there is no problem with that, but the chirping um, is obviously um, cause for concern and it's only a matter of time before the bearings fail completely uh, and the alternator probably lets us down. So yeah, uh, in order to uh, get it out, obviously we need to remove things like the plastic cover uh, to be able to get at it. It's quite convenient that it's actually mounted just here, right underneath this cover. Um, so there's not a lot of things that we have to remove in order to get it off. But first things first, what we need to do is disconnect the battery. So I'll get the battery disconnected and then we can uh, get stuck into uh, getting the alternator removed. <laughs> Okay, so battery is disconnected, so we're, we're safe to now work on the electrical system. First thing I'm going to do is pull this plastic cover up and pop it to one side. And here is the alternator. And as you can see, we've got fairly decent uh, access to the connectors. There's an electrical connector just here, and then obviously the battery main, the main cable just there. Now, um, yeah, there's a couple of bolts that hold it on and it is fairly straightforward to get out. We need to remove the belt, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to give myself a little bit more room to work by removing this cover here. Removing this cover will then allow me to take the electric fan out of the way and that will give me better access to the tensioner for the, uh, for the belt. This isn't 100% necessary. You know, you can you can get into the tensioner without removing this, but it's always nice to have a little bit more room to work. And pop that off just like so. Next is the intake the intake pipe. It goes to the air box, and then here we've got an electrical connector for the for the fan. And then what we need to do is just remove the clips that are down each side. On this one here, there is a another torque screw that does need to be come that does need to come out. And I think that one is a T25. Yeah, T25. Switch to a Switch to a shorter one for that. And there we go. Okay, so now that's removed, we can pull this out. As you can see here, there's like a little spring clip that you just need to pull out uh, to release it. And then it's a couple of little slots that locate it in place. So let's pop that down to one side as well. 
as you can see now, we've got loads of room to get into the tensioner. So what I'll do, I'll get the right, um, the right socket and then we can take the tension off, remove the belt. Okay, the tensioner is this pulley just here. And as you can see, it's got a, uh, it's got a bolt in it. Now what we want to do, 16 mil socket, big ratchet, or a breaker bar or something like that. And all we're doing, rotating it clockwise. And as you can see, it's taking the tension off, off the belt. So we can pull the belt off all the way around. Now at this stage, it's probably um, a good idea. We can now uh, release the tension off the, uh, off the tensioner itself. Um, and then, uh, yeah, let it reset. Now, um, yeah, as I was going, as I was going to say, um, it's a good idea at this stage, probably to make a note of the routing of the cable, because if, um, if you don't remember, when it comes to putting it back on, you'll struggle. Um, so yeah, make a note of it. You can draw on a bit of paper or whatever, uh, if you can't remember, if, uh, if you do remember, then uh, by all means crack on. Now, as you can see, a little on here. Free from the uh, free from the belt. Now, what I want to do, just quickly spin it, and hopefully you can hear this on the camera. Don't know if you can hear that chirp. Hopefully that's picking up up on the camera. Um, but that is the noise that we're hearing during operation. So that is the reason why we're changing it. Um, so next thing we need to do: uh, disconnect the main battery post and the uh, and the electrical connector. Right then, electrical connectors. This one, just a simple quick release clip. Just press in the, uh, the tab there and it'll pull off. Tuck that out of the way. And then the one on the top is a 13 mil, 13 mil socket. Let me just recover that, there we go. 13 mil socket. And just disconnect it. Pop the nut off. And there we go. You've got two tabs on there, remove them both. Obviously one comes from the loom, the other one comes from the starter motor. Stuck them both down there out of the way so that they won't get caught on anything. Right, tuck that down there. Right, next we need to remove these two bolts here, one there and one there, and they are both 16s. Okay, I'm going to use a little extension for, uh, for the bottom one just to be able to get in there. Now the nuts on the back of these are both captive in the housing of the alternator. So you shouldn't need to recover anything. And there we go, there's one. And then the other. Oops. There we go, just like so. So yeah, bottom one's quite a long bolt, top one's a lot shorter. Okay, so now we should be able to withdraw the alternator from the block. And it's quite tight on there, so it's probably gonna take a little bit of, bit of effort. Now, the nut on the back kind of draws in and pinches the, the alternator onto the block. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get a little hammer, or a little mallet, should I say, just give that a tap, just to push the, push the nut back out and then that should allow us to remove the alternator. So I'll go and grab a mallet, give it a little tap, and then we should be able to pull it off without any restriction. Okay, what I was talking about, this captive nut here, um, obviously you can see it's protruding this side. As you tighten this bolt down, what it does is it pulls in and pinches against the block. If you look at the new one, the replacement, you can see it's not sticking out. It's because this one hasn't been tightened in. And as you can see, the actual captive nut itself is actually sitting proud of the housing. As we put the bolt in and draw it in, it just draws that captive nut in and holds it tight. Um, but anyway, yeah, moving on. That is the old one removed. So what I can do, put this to one side Yeah, you can hear that the bearing at the back is particularly noisy. 
Not so much the one at the front, but the rear one, definitely. But this has been on the car since I've had it. We've had this car over four years. Um, so this alternator has done okay, to be fair. And as I said, it was outputting power as expected. It's just getting a bit noisy. So, stump this one, get on with it in the new one. Okay, the bear in this one sounds absolutely lovely. There's absolutely no noise in it at all, as you would expect being brand new. Um, so, what I'll do, I will feed this gently down into the slot where the old one came from. And what I'm gonna do is refit the top mounting bolt into position. Let me get it almost up to touch. And there we go. Right, the bottom one obviously has to go through its opening and then catch onto the nut on the back, which it is, and then we can tighten them up. So, here's my ratchet. Get it nipped up. Now, it will come up to touch and it'll feel like it's tight. But as I said before, we've got to draw in that nut. Okay, now it's up to touch. I can feel it's tightened up, but it's not tight. So what I'm doing, and now just draw in the captive nut in so it pinches the alternator against a block, which it has. That is only hand tight at the moment. I'm gonna to torque these up, but I don't know the torque setting off the top of my head. So I will go consult the manual and then torque both of those bolts. The torque setting, according to the manual, for these bolts is 38 newton meters. That's one. Two. Okay, next what we need to do is um, connect up the battery terminals, the B post. So we've got that one first and then that one on top. In fact, what I'll do before we do that, just because they're a little bit tarnished, is I'm going to get my wire brush out, I'm going to give them a good scrub and then uh, and then we'll get them fitted. Okay, as you can see, been given a good, a good scrub with a wire brush and that's brought them up really, really nice. Get the nut on and just snug it up. Don't have to go absolutely crazy on that just make it tight and then the electrical terminal obviously it'll only go uh, the electrical connection should I say it'll only go on one way because as you can see it's got a rounded end and a square side uh, rounded end that way and then push it on till it clicks there we go right next thing we need to do fit the belt now at this stage it's probably a really good idea to inspect your belt give it a look Make sure there's no cracking in it. Now, this belt wasn't replaced all that long ago. It's only about a year old. Um, it was replaced when I uh, changed the tensioner. So I'm not gonna replace this at this stage, but if it's, you know, if it's cracked, replace it. They're not expensive. They're only about 10, 15 quid. So uh, yeah, uh, if need be, then change it. So routine, obviously, if you remembered, then good on you. If you didn't, what I'll do, I will put a picture up on the screen now uh, of the belt route so that you can see it um, and that should help you okay so over the top of the alternator around the inside AC compressor and around the idler around the crank pulley and then 
obviously from that point it goes to the tensioner but here from the alternator it goes down and underneath this pulley in the middle and then round the water pump we've done this a few times because obviously if you've saw my water pump video we we had exactly the same thing to do make sure it's sitting correctly on all the pulleys and i think we're good let's double check them all yeah okay now what we need to do next is we need to take our socket put it onto the tensioner like so we should have set this up beforehand but we're here now and there we go now i've got the belt obviously around the outside of the socket and then all i'm going to do is apply pressure to it and then tuck the belt onto the pulley and then release the pressure now at this stage obviously we need to double check that everything is sitting properly onto its onto its pulleys correctly and yeah we look good we look good there so okay now at this stage what we can do is we can reconnect the battery make sure that the uh, the new alternator is charging and there we go 14.8 volts absolutely perfect stoked with that happy okay um so that's the alternator replaced i'm really really happy with that all i've got to do now is refit the fan and all the shrouds and stuff while we're in here though what i have noticed is we've got a bit of a diesel leak um, just down here you can see there is uh, there is diesel leaking and you can see the smoke here so we've got a couple of injectors that are leaking so i'm going to do a video on that um, obviously they need um that needs sorted um so yeah uh, keep an eye out for that one we'll uh, we'll get that one sorted so right what i need to do now kill the engine get the rest of the car put it back together right then the fan obviously there's a few little tabs that need to just go into their locations where they where they're supposed to be so just make sure that they're in and everything will be good and there we are right a little screw just goes in there and then just nip the screw up and then electrical connector plug it in till it clicks okay next we want the air feed tube for the air box just pop that into its location like so then the air feed cover just make sure that that's located correctly inside like so then screw on each side just like so tighten each one down there we go last but not least last but not least should i say is the engine cover and that goes in like so and then pops down and there we are that is the job done not a particularly taxing job fairly easy pretty straightforward and you only need some basic hand tools in order to carry it out um but yeah that is that job done the squeak from the alternator now solved and this alternator that should go on to last another 60 80,000 miles possibly even 100,000 probably um as i said before 
we have got a leak from the uh, from the injectors which I do need to fix so that'll be uh, an upcoming video so keep an eye out for that but yeah as for this video hopefully you enjoyed it if you did found it useful whatever hit the like button um, subscribe for more uh, check out my patreon just set up a patreon account if you want to help support the channel um, and enable me to bring you uh, more content such as this then by all means go and check that out I'll leave the link in the description um, but yeah that is that is me thank you for stopping by guys you take care now bye bye now